How are you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji, host of Tear Talk, and today I'm going to answer one of the viewers' questions. One of the viewers' questions was, how do you get an inmate's respect and ultimately their compliance? And I think it's a great question. I don't think I've ever devoted a full episode to this. I, I've discussed it, but never devoted a full episode. So why not give it a shot? Now remember, what I say is not all inclusive, so feel free to comment and give your advice below. I'd love to hear what you guys think about how to gain an inmate's respect and ultimately their compliance. So, um, guys, don't forget, guys, the show is for you, the frontline professionals who work behind that wall. So, if you haven't, please subscribe, interact, engage, you know, and hit that bell. The bell's going to notify you every time I post a video up. All right, guys, stand by for our sponsors. I wanted to attend a university that had an intelligence program. I wanted to look at problems different. I wanted to increase my critical thinking abilities. AMU offered those avenues to expand. Obtaining your degree as an adult, you're actually paying yourself and investing in yourself. You can't put a dollar on it, it's priceless. It's something that can never be taken away from you. American Military University, learn from the leader. Being a corrections officer takes its toll on even the strongest individuals. The constant need to perform at the highest level putting your life at risk in a hostile environment, and the mental scarring of traumatic experiences. 31% of corrections officers show symptoms of PTSD, and 66% of people with PTSD also suffer with a substance abuse problem. The Transformations First Responders Program is specially designed to help veterans and officers heal from the grips of addiction and PTSD in a comfortable, supportive, and serene setting. You are not alone. If you have questions about the services we offer, give us a call at 866-762-8454 to get more information on this affordable and life-changing program. All right, guys, thank you for listening to our sponsors. It's kind of like the second half of the day, so at the very beginning, the first video I put was me on my way to work. Now it's on my way home from work, stress-free, hopefully. Um, so uh, thank you guys, as always, for your support. If you haven't, please subscribe, interact, engage, and hit that bell. That will notify you each time I post up a video. And the channel's for you guys, those that work behind the wall who feel they need a voice. Um, so a question was posed to me about um, how do you earn an inmate's respect and ultimately their compliance? And I, and I think it's a great question, I, but I actually think, even though it's two parts, I think they kind of relate to each other, right? I mean, getting the inmate's respect ultimately leads to compliance. And, and, and it is a good topic to discover because guys, in our world, we need to have that respect. And it's about how you carry yourself, obviously, for a professional. But I, I want to talk about police for a second because when someone asked me that question, the first thing I thought about was police. You know, when police come onto a scene, uh, the uniform carries a bit of weight gives them that automatic sense of authority, uh, or it should, times are changing now, um, but ultimately the public doesn't deal with the police every day, so when police come on a scene, you know, we all should go into that respect mode, and that, that, that's the, 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 the uniform, the power of authority that comes with that uniform, um, but again, when the public loses respect and they start bastardizing um, the profession, unfortunately that part of the shield that the officers carry with them lessen, and that's why we got to definitely get back and get that respect where it needs to be but for those that work in prisons jails you know correctional systems it's different for us our people are conditioned to the uniform so if you work in a jail you're getting those constant reoffenders. Uh, you work in a prison you have people that have been conditioned that are doing time already been through the system so the uniform really doesn't carry a lot of weight like it should so what carries weight technically is how you carry yourself so when you get inmates that are no longer you know, they, they no longer care about that initial impression of the uniform. Well, now it goes on who we are. And now it goes by how we carry ourselves within the uniform. So that, that's a good difference between us and police. Um, because again, our interactions with these inmates are every day. So they start to see you and not the uniform. So ultimately, when it comes to getting respect and ultimately the compliance of an inmate, you got to go back to those same three words. Those same three words that are golden in anyone's career and seems to be pretty consistent on a national level when it comes to training, which is the firm, fair consistency of the role that you're in. So, you know, we just break down those words real quick, but ultimately it's these words that will lead to respect, that will ultimately lead, lead, you know, lead to compliance. So what are we talking about firm? 
you're working in a facility or you're working in a system where inmates are looking to challenge you. So you have to be firm with the directives that you give and how you present yourself. You you have to be able to carry that sense of authority. It doesn't mean you have to advertise it all day, but they have to know that you mean business. So being firm is saying a no and sticking behind that no. And I did a whole video on the importance of saying no and um, how you have to stand by your your directive. So when I say no, you have to stand by that no. If you have the inability to say no, this isn't a job for you. It's not a job for you. Also, when you give an order, you're given an order. You're not asking the inmate. Listen, if you want to be polite and cordial, you can end it with a please or begin it with a please. But you're not asking the inmate. If you ask the inmate, you're giving them a chance to respond back, yes or no. And if they say no, did they really refuse a direct order? No, they didn't because you asked them. And the problem with asking them is also it looks like they're doing you a favor. So then you be kind, of, kind of become obligated. You know, please do this for me as opposed to please can you do this for me. You know, it, you got it. It's a directive. Be firm with that directive. You're also not looking for an inmate's approval. You're not looking to be Miss Popular. Uh, you're not looking for um, to be their friends. You're looking to do a job. And inmates will respect you ultimately if they know that that's what you're there to do. If you're staying within your prescribed role and you're doing what's expected of you as defined by your duties. You know, that's the key. Inmates don't respect people that they can manipulate. Actually, they look at you as soft and vulnerable. So if they can manipulate you, that's because they don't respect you. Okay, they're looking for that target on your back. And when you're soft and overly friendly, you're making that target bigger for them. So again, those are attributes, if you will, that they don't respect. So don't be that person. Um, when it comes to being consistent, that's one of the most... And consistent actually kind of goes into fairness too, but consistent is one of the most important things that you need to follow in corrections, being consistent with who you are. Now again, our routine can change if need be, to, you know, be spontaneous, keep inmates on their toes, but you being consistent with who you are is very, very important. Inmates need to know what to expect from you. And I'm talking about personality-wise. They need to have that type of consistency in the people that run that unit. Because again, if there's inconsistencies, well, that's going to be very problematic for you when you run a unit. And that's also very problematic for them. Believe it or not, a lot of inmates love that scheduled routine. I also believe, before we go into fairness, that respect is also given to inmates that see that you're able to adapt and adjust. And what I mean by that, there's a lot of officers that strictly go by the rules. This is going to be where we may argue a little bit. Um, but again, hear me out. There are some rules in which we have discretionary power over on the frontline level. So some rules, we have the ability to automatically decide where we want to go with this from a front line. So I think management has more trust in their officers when they handle a lot of the rules that could be handled on the front line. Now, when I was in management, unless right up had to, had to occur, I would like some handling from my front line. You know, I would like to see their discretion handling certain situations. Again, but that's up for the officer to utilize that. I, 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 I honestly want to say you don't want to write up everything. And I know that may come to some people as, yeah, well, that's what you got to do. You have to address everything. That's a rule violation. Whether you choose to write something up is on you. But again, there are certain things that you can handle on your own level. And that's kind of the discretion that we would like to see because that gives you, that tells us that you're able to adapt. Remember, a lot of people look at hard officers, officers that are super strict, as weak, actually. Believe it or not, I know it sounds weird, but they look at them as weak because it looks like that they follow the rules to a T because they don't know how to venture to the left or right if need be. Okay, so, so a lot of people look at hard, hard officers as it's a sense of weakness, like they're overcompensating for something. Uh, but again, for those officers who do like to write the charge, I'm not telling you not to. If that's your style, that's your style. But what I'm trying to say is that if you have issues, inmate breaks rules, you still have to address it. But whether you choose to write it, <coughs> ultimately, I'm talking about for the little minor infractions. That's on you. Minor infractions, I would expect to be handled on a frontline level unless they're repeat, repetitive 
minor infractions. So I'm only talking about minor infractions. Obviously, there's certain charges that you're going to write regardless. I'm talking about the minor minor infractions that give you a little discretion as to how you want to, um, what you want to do with that. And again, if somebody keeps on violating, then you have a chance to kind of step it up. Uh, but that's because they don't listen. But again, the first time around, you know, you, you got some little discretion. That's good for a supervisor to give you that discretion, by the way, because it empowers you and gives you a chance to run your unit the way you see is best effective. And that helps management because we're not, you know, surrounded with the little stuff, but also the inmates will know what to expect from you. Now, that kind of goes right into fairness as well, being fair. So what you do for one, you do for the other. You know, that, that's what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Because the last thing you want to do is because, you know, because in our office that shows over favoritism. Because that's a problem too, because that could fall into undo. So, again, being fair all around. And, and being fair, actually, as I said, is being consistent. If you're fair, you're being consistent with everyone. So, again, those are three words that really have never, I don't see them changing. They're effective today. They were effective yesterday. And I think ultimately, if you live by that code and do what I said, you're going to get the respect from those inmates who choose to do the right thing. Because believe it or not, guys, a lot of inmates look to rehabilitate, look to take advantage of the system, see what they got for them. And those inmates will have respect for you because you're doing what you're paid to get done. You're doing what you're paid to get done. That's the key. You're a professional. You're doing the work that you came to do. You're staying within your prescribed role. You're controlling the boundaries. That's what inmates ultimately are going to respect. They're not going to respect the officer that they can manipulate. They're not going to respect the officer that's soft, that looks for their approval. They're going to respect the, the respect the officer that knows the job, has the power to adjust and adapt, and ultimately, as I said, is firm, fair, and consistent. So, as always, guys, the show is Tear Talk. Thank you for the question. Feel free to comment and tell me what you think because this wasn't an all-inclusive list. I kind of cheated a little bit because I used something that was already established. But as always, guys, love you guys. Stay safe, and I'll see you on the next video. And guys, please subscribe, interact, engage, and hit that bell. Show us Tear Talk. My name is Anthony Gange.